Hey folks, and we are back with uh, our Blitz with Isvanopol. And uh, things are getting very spicy. The, the nap ending that we had at the end of the Blitz, where uh, basically folks declared war on me because they know how frigging strong I am. They're doing it out of fear. Doing it out of fear. Now, declaring war out of fear... It doesn't always end very well. Sometimes you have to do it. Um, but it's much better to declare war out of being hungry rather than fear. And I kind of tried explaining this to them in chat. I can't remember how much I talked about it during the Blitz. But um, if we look at score graphs, uh, for like province size, I'm tied with Arcadia. I'm a little bit above these guys so i'm not terribly big in terms of throne points um i'm very small i only have one right so there's a, quite a few people with two and i have one in terms of forts which are you know a kind of wealth you can reap from a land if you take their stuff and take their forts um we are very very low in the fort count and um in terms of income like how rich are our lands our lands are actually not very rich um, this is when I recast Riches, I think. Um, so without Riches, I think I'm like down here. So I'm kind of rich. My lands are pretty decent, but they're not phenomenal. One of these was maybe taking Flegra. I'm not sure. No, Flegra is not rich. So, yeah. Maybe this was the Fleg. No, this can't be the Flegra one. I'm not actually sure. So I'm kind of rich, but a lot of this is my global. Um, gym income. Gym income, um, this this much here is Earthblood Deepwell, right? So you have to subtract this much. And then later, like right here, this much is Stellar Focus. So you really have to subtract this much and this much. And this is going to be the gym income from my land. So that would be like down here. So... Um, this was Mother Oak. I think it was one of the first things to go up right here. You can see it's half as tall as the Earthblood Deepwell. So if you subtract this much from Arcadia, Arcadia actually has more gem-rich lands than I do. I'm If you look at the gem income you get from the land itself, mine is like down here, and Arcadia's is here, and then the dolphins are right here. And I'm, I'm probably beneath the dolphins a little bit. Um, and then terms, uh, so why, why is it worth subtracting these things out? Because if you're looking for, I mean, they don't have access to all this information. If you're looking for a war target, you want to attack somebody who is going to have a lot of good stuff you can take. Or you're worried you know, that they have too many resources, and even if you don't kill them, you need to take away those resources. Well, anyway. Uh, research, we're like... I, nobody has seen this graph. They all know... Uh, who was it? I think I think uh, Jimbo, Arcadia, he basically said... He called out... It was kind of weird. He got it exactly right. He was like, you're at 4,000 a turn. I was like, no, I'm not. That's silly. And I was at like 3,500. He's like, okay, you're at 3,500 then. And I was like, quiet, cricket, cricket. <laughs> um, so anyway, people have an idea. but And I, I kind of told them, we were talking in the, the game chat. They were like, how much, but your research is way ahead. And I was like, yeah, it's way ahead of y'all. <laughs> so they know, people know. Um, yeah, we're we're very close to maxing out on research. We're like... Like, we're, like, this far away. Like, we can only get about... This is the max level of research, right? So we're, we're getting there. We're going to be there super soon. Um, Dominion. Anyway, not really worth looking at. Army size. Now, I have tried to get out of this 2v1. Um, and unfortunately for me... Somebody's hitting me with Murdering Winter here. And I ask everyone in chat, who the fuck is hitting me with Murdering Winter? Zan. And Zan is playing the Dolphins. 
Because the thing is, I have a nap with these guys. It hasn't expired. And it would be pretty rude for them to murder and wonder me while we're still in our nap. And they also don't really have the paths. Um... And normally you want a murdering winner like the turn you attack, because then you can disrupt orders too. So anyway. Um, Zan has said he did not deny it. He did not admit to it, but he didn't deny it, and I'm 90% sure it's him. Um, and later after I badgered him a little bit, he like semi-confessed. He said, well, you know, I do have a lot of water gems. Okay. Um... So now I've got Arcadia going to be attacking me from the north. I've got Macadon going to be attacking me from the south. And the attacks are imminent now. It's like, uh, I think I have one more turn before they come. But we're going to go ahead. And so anyway, and then I've also got the sea people fucking with me. Even though I don't, I really don't. I mean, I'll be honest. I have no under, like... Why would he murdering winner this? It makes no sense. Like, Macadon is going to declare war on me. And he's obvious. This is my only throne. Like, in some ways, the, you can reduce, especially as the game goes later, the entire value of my empire to this one throne. So, obviously, Macadon is going to want this, right? He This used to be his province. He's going to want it. And so, what is he going to attack me while I'm at war with Macadon? And just go for this? Doesn't make any sense. Um, but we've got, uh, we're doing some things now. Um, something that you could argue I should have done long ago. And that's we're making a black servant. Uh, we are also making the ranger's cloak. And we're making a bane venom charm. And we're going to be sending that underwater. Um, I'm going to make more of them if I can. But I'm going to be really stretched for, I had a lot of gems. But I'm going to be stretched for gems as the game I, basically there's a lot of stuff i have to do um i can't remember what i was spending death gems on this turn you might can find out oh i made shade mail just to have one you never know when you're going to need a shade mail it is good to just have one in inventory but this was at the expense of making more bane venom charms i don't want to overdo it on salt but uh, i basically told zan that and we don't have an app or anything um, so it's fine for him to murder and winter me. It's just, it pisses me off because we're not at war and he stands to gain nothing. He's just doing it to fuck with me. Um, and he, he's going to do it again next turn too. I'll, I'll show you next turn in a minute, but yeah. Anyway, I've told Zan that his land priv privileges are now revoked. So, uh, we're going to be attacking here with some gargs. We're going to be attacking here with uh, a guardian. We're going to be attacking here with the small army. Um, I've got, I actually, this communion is not, well, we'll see you next turn. It's not set up quite right. Um, I've got to kill these indies. So we've got this guy going after this one. I'm hoping I've got him on attack rear. I'm hoping he'll steal the Ivy King, which is something he can do. Uh, we've got these guys going after them. And yeah, then we've got one more turn until these guys come in. Um, in terms of research, I've got one turn left for Thom, which means I'll get it this turn, which means next turn I can script it. So I'm going to have Master and Slave just in time for the gangbang, just in time. Um, if they attacked me earlier, I would have probably scrapped some of my other priorities, but um, Alt-9 would have still been really important. I think I was doing Conjuration before this, uh, but anyway. Um... Yeah. So anyway, we're getting ready for the war. Uh, the, I don't have a ton of astral income. It's 20. Uh, and then I'm probably going to get another 10 from my thing. So it's kind of a lot. 10 from events. But and probably not 10, like 8. Um, so it's kind of a lot. But the kind of master and slaves I'm probably going to need to to deal with all these armies. Because I don't have a lot of troops. Uh, I'm going to need a lot. So anyway, it's going to be dicey. It's going to be dicey. Um, I do feel confident I can defend myself. I have some anti-raiding things, but I don't know. There's things I'm worried about. Let's talk about the things I'm worried about. I'm worried about assassins, like seducers, up here. It's going to be really annoying to get all my mages assassinated. Um, 
they have some stealthy raiders they can do, which is annoying. Macadon has very, very efficient thugs um, that can magic phase. So uh, I have to be a little careful about getting my guardians cut out because like his magic phase thugs with smashers will just ruin my guardians, like absolutely ruin them. So I've got to worry about that. Um, and then also, Astral, especially Astral 1 Majors, they're not great by themselves, right? You need to kind of have them grouped up. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to deal with the quantity of the rating pressure. I don't have a ton, you know, like, I don't know. If I hadn't lost the one Eternal Guardian over here to Zune, um, if my gargoyles were better against like players and I know I could put gear on them, but honestly, like these thugs down here are going to fuck these guys up and then they'll get killed by a lot of things that Arcadia has. So anyway, I mean, they're immune to charm, which is nice, but Arcadia has a helpless. So like a few sacreds will probably kill him. Um, and they've got all the resistances. So like brands on the gargoyle aren't going to do too much anyway. Uh, what I'm kind of expecting for this war is I'm, I think I will win every major fight, which means, and I've got enough armies and enough mages that I don't think there's any way they can take a fort from me. Like maybe this fort they could take, but all the other forts I feel pretty comfortable defending. What I don't feel very comfortable about is winning the raiding war. Like I could probably win the raiding war against one player, but I can't win the raiding war against two players. So anyway, that's a small problem. Um, okay, we're also, just a few notes. Uh, we're doing a Wondrous Workshop here. I need to also do a Wondrous Workshop here in Flegra. Um, the other thing I need to do in Flegra and I haven't done is I need to get the uh, the Telesthetic Animate. But I, at least I have temples here. So anyway, that will be coming out. Um, but yeah, that we'll kind of we'll skim through the, this turn. Can I go to the next now? Um, so 49... And I think around this time, 49, I think I am, oh wait, crap. Was 48 not really 48? Oh crap, so I didn't actually, this isn't, this must be 40. Wait, so this is the, this is really confusing me. Turn 48. Oh, wait, no, this is me attacking. See, I get the flags all mixed up still. <laughs> um, I was like, wait, what are these events? It's, this is me attacking um, these idiots, the dolphins. Um, he's just pinging me here with the barbarian chief. Here's the dolphins murdering, wintering me again. They're killing, they killed the lore master, which kind of sucks. They killed 17 units, which is more this time. Anyway, fucking idiots. Um, I mean, the the argue the what what the dolphins have told me is they're doing it because they think I'm in the number one position, so they're just fucking with me. Like, but you're not fucking with me to advance your position. Like, you're wasting, and it's not trivial. Like, murdering winner is expensive. They're doing it just to mess with me. Like, they could be saving up to do a bigger casting of Maelstrom or something. Because, like, if you have Murdering Winter, you're pretty close to Maelstrom, and they don't have Maelstrom up. Anyway. Um, I'm trying to think what else. What else? We've got... Uh, we had some battles. Some of them went okay. Here, this was a mistake. We attack. I brought too many off-page. I didn't. I had a pretty okay ratio, like generally, but I have too many off-path mages that are doing big buffs on these guys, and I freaking blow up my community slaves against just like nothing PD. I didn't need to cast anything. So anyway, rip six philosophers. Major rookie mistake. Um. So yeah, it's embarrassing. 
uh, headed back over this way. I would have had these guys run around more, but they're, they're spent. They are very spent. Yeah, I was going to have them run over here. Uh, here we had another mishap. Not a great way to prepare for uh, the incoming 3v1. And notice, I have a 2v1 coming in. I found out the third player was casting things at me, and I immediately attacked the third, even though I've got a 2v1 coming in. Don't care. Uh, barbs, I didn't know what the PD type was. And yeah, these guys don't do very well against barbs because some of the barbs have like mauls, which are blunt, which we get wrecked by, and they just do enough damage they don't care that I have pretty high protection. So, wrecked. I didn't even kill any of the PD, hardly. Um, but the Eternal Guardian comes in here, does fine. And he's not going to give a fuck about barbs. So, uh, he's going to come over here and kill the barbs. Um, but this is the turn... Zune also has decided to remain neutral in the war. Zune, um, who have they conquered? God, I don't think they've conquered anybody. Zune is a nation that... I think, I think uh, JB, who's playing them, I think he's playing them pretty right. I think they can be aggressive. Um, and he would, like, he has used capital. So... They have fought a little bit, but like this was really just walking and taking the capital. This wasn't really fighting. Um, they can do a lot with a little, and I can kind of understand. And they take, they're kind of intensive. Like you need to have your blood economy set up. They don't really want to, they don't want to be in a hard war early. Because, and I could be wrong about this. This is my perception. They need to get blood economy going. They're like very destable if they don't have blood economy going and they're not doing the cloning everywhere. They get all these bad events. People get diseased. It's bad. So you kind of need a while to get your feet under you. But once you do, you have like literally it's the only nation with truly unlimited blood slaves. Like the game could go to turn 300 and you would be still making blood slaves just as fast as you were at turn 50. I mean, you can blood hunt like crazy with this nation. Um, and they get really good blood summons later. So there's all sorts of cool stuff they can do. Um, and I think he's just hunkering down. He's he's actually kind of excited, I think. Like, this is perfect for him in a way. Because these two guys are about to attack me. And, like, look at this. 620 units. And, like, the, the first two entries... Corbeons, those are sacred. Second entry, Betel Knights, those are sacred. And he stole those from Nabatum. And then Kicknids, I think those are sacred too. Maniads aren't. Pegasus Riders are. And then he's got a shit ton of mages. And maybe that's what the Kicknids are. I mean, this is a scary, super high quality Doomstack he's got coming at me. So I've got to deal with this. He's probably going to have little fuckers raiding me. I caught... Um, I caught this guy, right? So he was clearly moving this guy in for some deep raiding or for some assassinating. I'm not sure. Because these guys are... They're stealthy. They're also assassins uh, with a retinue. So you can use them for raiding and for assassination. I'm not sure. what Which one he was doing. But I'm not very looking forward to that. Um the assassins and then look macadon's got this doom stack here coming to get me and then he's got smaller forces down here but presumably more on the way um and then he's gonna have a shit ton of thugs and he's a dickhead and pinged me even though we're at peace but i mean i'm not gonna go uh, file a report to the authorities or anything for that uh so anyway but these guys are gonna attack me now here's the thing i'm gonna kill all these armies like they can there's almost no way. I mean, there's things they could do. Mass Earthquake, turn one, which maybe Macadon could do. These guys could do Earthquake, but not before I think I get Army of Gold off. Um, Macadon maybe could do Mass Earthquake, turn one, if we mess me up. But, yeah, I mean, aside from that, they have no chance. They have no chance. Um, in a major fight. 
Now these guys are going to be spamming out charm and like in theory I could lose, right? Because this is really scary. But, and I have problems. I don't have enough pearls. So I'm going to have to end up alchemizing a lot of my gems. Uh, and we're, I already did a lot of that this turn. So I had to alchemize a lot of gems, probably like 30 or 40 gems. Because um, what I need to have is, well, let's look at what we're doing. We've got, this is, okay, let's take a look at this situation. So Macadon's got a huge army here. We cannot issue attack orders this turn. Um, my goal is not to take infrastructure, but it is to get out of a 2v1 and to kill as many of their armies as I can in the process. Um, so, like, we're not going to, like, ride out and go attack them. No, we're going to focus on killing all their shit. So this army, he, if he thinks I'm going to ride out and attack and be aggressive, he would move here to intercept me. But it's unlikely I do that, and he probably is feeling aggressive, so he's going to come out and attack here. Like, there's a very obvious move. He may not do it, but, you know, he's probably going to do it. Um, so anyway, we're moving our stack here. Now, um, we don't have a huge mage core. This is pretty big, but not huge. It's, I don't know, 16 slaves or something? 15? No, probably not even that. Probably like 10 slaves. Um, we've got a few guys. Uh, the good thing is we have high path mages who are uh, going to be casting a lot of the things that otherwise like we could do in a communion but it would be off path and put a lot of fatigue on our mages we're going to be doing them just with like the high powered mages like our troll king and then our ivy king um, and they're going to be doing a relief mass regen army of gold summer earth power and then weapons of sharpness got a bunch of trolls we've got a bunch of communion slaves we've got this guy doing turn one anti-magic um I'm trying to think what this would be important against I can't really think of anything that Macadon would be doing. Anyway, I'm doing it. Um, we've got <clears throat> Fog Warriors getting dropped by this dude. So this is going to be very high fatigue for the communion. I've got more communion slaves. These guys just firing off master and slave. Power of the Spheres, uh, that actually isn't going to work. So I'll just do something off script. And then most importantly, we have Home Slice. I should have named him. Oberic, which is a pretty cool name actually, so I'm cool with that. He's old. Uh, he's got six reinvigoration. Uh, he's blessed, which is just basically going to give him the pin bonus. He's got the slashing scroll, which gives him pin bonus one. This guy is going to demonstrate why this nation is so freaking strong. And at at this point in the game, which is for most nations, this would be like like solid mid game or like late mid game you know it's turn 49 so kind of late mid game people are starting to get a nine or two um we're getting multiple nines people are not really getting nines this is like people have multiple sevens right now is kind of what this is you can have nines if you're like a really strong researcher um anyway um, but this guy, okay, so one penetration, then we've got a rune smasher, two penetrations, so up to three. He's got a hat, give him better astral. Then this gets him up to four. It's one penetration because it's from our bless. He's not normally sacred. Um, and then boots of the messenger because, of course, then eye of the void. Two more penetration. That gets us up to three, five, or no, three, four. Um, this gets us up to six. Um, and then we've got this, and this gets us up to seven. And then we've got this, and this gets us up to nine. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a nine penetration master and slave caster. Now, you can tell I'm getting excited about this. And... You may say, because maybe you've not dealt with this sort of thing before or thought about it or theory, you may be like, well, Lucid, what is the big deal about nine penetration? Let's take a look at his nation. Now, let's assume that this guy knows I'm going to be doing astral plays because I've got a shit ton of philosophers, and he could put two and two together and know that I'm either going to be soul slaying the shit out of him, enslave minding him, or maybe even, if I've researched really hard, Spamming out master and slave. 
let's say he knows that. And so he's like, okay, we're going to put up anti-magic turn one. We're not going to mess around with this. Even though astral is very hard for this nation. They don't really have good astral. They have this dude who can, you know, the, the two variants can do it. But, you know, this is, not an, this is not an astral powerhouse of a nation, right? They can kind of do it. Okay, they've got the seers. So, okay, yeah, they could do some communions. Um, I mean, this is a cheapest one, so they kind of could be a powerhouse, actually. Um, but, yeah, okay, so he's going to do anti-magic turn one. Let's take a look at his units. These are like his top-tier units. They're 12 MR. Let's look at what's in this army. He's got a lot of these spearmen dudes these guys they're 10 mr so it's either 10 or 12 mr now he's going to get um anti-magic on them that's going to kick these guys up to uh to to 16 and the other one's to 14 but he's going to be fine okay this is still drain so he's going to be lucky because that's going to give him another mr so they're going to be at 17. Now, normally it's my dominion. So if he's going to be attacking me, like all these other places where he's going to be attacking, we're in magic two, which can be minus one MR. It's going to matter. The difference two MR is going to matter a lot. Um, but anyway, like even at 17, normally when you're 17, you're like, okay, well, we're not really suckers for master and slave. But I have nine pin, right? So that's going to take his 17 MR guys. And it's going to kick it down to effectively being um eight um yeah 17 minus nine is eight so and that's for the horses the spearmen are going to fall under eight they're going to be effectively six mr and the check for master and slave is against eight mr so because it's mr easily negates <laughs> so that means each casting we're going to be get even after he cast anti magic, which normally is a pretty good protection against master and slave. Like it's going to dramatically reduce the effectiveness of master and slave. So even with that up, we're going to be getting half his army. Um, and this is just such a predictable move from. I mean, almost they're they know I don't want to be in a two v one, which I don't. Um, and so they can feel that I I'm not. I haven't been projecting fear, but I've been projecting annoyance. So anyway, that all the more likely is going to go on the aggressive because I am annoyed, but I'm not afraid. Um, so anyway, we've got this set up. This is going to, and we've got all the big buffs and I have 27 PD, which is going to give me a few of the Alquil dudes. And then these guys, not many, but this, this is also enough PD that once I put army of gold and fog warriors on them, it's going to be pretty hard for them to chop through them. Now, this army up here has two places they could move. They could move to this tile and this tile. They're equally likely. I thought it was more likely, or I think it's more likely, that they move here, because that will open them up to taking this fort. And this is kind of adjacent to their throne. So it's kind of protecting, you know. I don't know, it makes more sense to me for them to like sweep through and get all three of these forts, maybe get my cap later, or like come here and then go here, and then he's, I have to choose which I defend because it's gonna be hard for me to defend both forts or all these forts. Um, and there's just a more valuable province than this. You know, it's got, um, I've got a blood hunting operation here. I, mean, I guess the unrest is high, but anyway. Um, so anyway, here we're basically doing another master and slave trap. Now the difference with this though, is I don't have all the gear that I, like, I don't have another rune smasher. I don't have another slashing, or maybe I have a slashing scroll. I don't have the eye of the void. This, I don't have all the pin gear basically. So I've got my God coming in the alpha nerd. Now I was really worried about him dying in a fight. Cause I, I'm not very confident. I don't know what's in this army, first of all. I haven't pinged it. I don't know the mage support. I don't know what spells he's going to cast. There's a lot I don't know. Um, and so because I don't know, um, I'm very, very cautious. 
Um, so if, if I lose this, I want everything here to be expendable. So like my god, I've given him, I've taken the golem armor, the armor of virtue off the golem, uh, and I put it on him. So if he gets hit in the fight, he's just going to peace out. Um, I've given him the flailing hands, which is a basically a death skull staff, but it gives plus one pin. And then I've given him the ring of wizardry, which I feel comfort, or comfortable with him having because he's got the virtue armor on. And that's going to give him plus one pin. And then I've got another booster. Uh, and then he's blessed from being in my dominion, but this also blesses him too. So anyway, he's pin three, which is not very high compared to like pin nine. Um, and so, he, but I've given him 20 gems. So he's going to cast it twice, master and slave, master and slave, which in and of itself is not going to get a lot of the army. Cause I, like, let's take this. These guys are actually lower MR. They are, um, I think 10, 11, the Corbians are 11, but in magic two, which is where they'll be. If they attack me here, it's going to be 10. If he does anti-magic, it'll get up to 14. So like 14 and then with me having three pin, that'll get him down to like 11, but then it's going to be 11 versus eight, which means I'll probably get like, probably like 20% of the army with each cast. So, but casting it once wouldn't be enough to win the fight. Casting it twice, maybe I'm getting like 40% of the army, but then I've got it. I think I have another guy casting it too. Yeah, this guy's also casting it twice. Um, and he has a slashing scroll and an eye of the void, so he's going to be at three pin also. So if they come here, we'll probably get about 70, 80% of the army. Um, now, the other move they could have is they go here. And I'm sending in uh, Rimmer, the Eternal Guardian, and he's got the bone armor to do soul vortex. He's got this with protective force 30, which is pretty good. He's got this to kind of shock people, and he's got this to kind of give bonus defense. And, uh, yeah, so Earth Power, Temper Flesh, Astral Shield, Resist Magic, Legions of Steel, Attack. Seems pretty strong. I could maybe do, like, Iron Skin, too. But I was a little worried I don't have too much shock resistance, so I don't know. But this is the idea. I've got the... Oh, no, I am doing it. I've got this guy with Iron Warriors. Blessing Iron Warriors, Earth Might, Body Ethereal, Cheat Fate. So anyway, and I, enough PD to kind of hopefully hold them off while he gets fluffed up. And then I, I don't... Unless they have very specific things to deal with Guardians, I don't think they can kill it. So I would rather they come here and I steal their army. But if they go here, uh, I'm thinking there's a pretty good chance I kill a lot of dudes. Um, so anyway, that is the thought process. Um, I But I'm also not... I'm, I had to alchemize so many gems. Like, I can't afford to teleport things around. I can't summon dudes. There's not a ton of guys which are like... Like, I don't think this army would attack here. I could have put, like, a defense force over here from this fort to try to defend against this, but I'm also out of money. I've had to do PD dumps here and here. I mean, not, like, extreme PD dumps, but significant ones. And here. Um, so it's wasted all my money. And uh, additionally, most of my gems with getting, like, I had to alchemize all this stuff to do all these master and slaves like this is not cheap i have 40 pearls set up for this battle and i've got i think do i only have one cast? i think i only have one caster here so yeah 20 pearls for this one so it's like 60 and i didn't have 60 pearls at the start of the turn i probably had like 25 um and then i'm also dropping a bunch of spells on i mean gems on other things you know like i've got each of these i've got fog warriors and army of gold going off and same here uh, and then nature gems for relief and acid regen. So anyway, point being, I don't really have all the resources to commit to like making items, to go make thugs, to counter raid. I'm like pretty all in on defending against these major attacks that I see coming from these other forces. So anyway, guys, uh, I think that is it for this episode. Um, tune back in next time to see all of the fireworks as the battles start.
Take care.